wet year for us. I don't know if the whole valley was as wet as we were. It was extremely wet. We lost a lot of revenue that year due to brown hay. We should get the dryers, hay dryers. It, it seemed like everyone that was that we discovered found in a 24-hour period could do 96 bales. The price for the unit versus what they were getting done, it just wasn't feasible. Nobody was doing the volumes. We wanted to do at least three to 500 bales a day in a 24-hour period. Wear through the veil, like starting at the bottom, blows it up through, and the air will travel the path of least resistance. And sometimes, if there's a heavy, wet wad in the veil, the air will work its way around it. And so, you just have to keep the veil in longer. Eventually, you'll dry that wad out. So, it's not the same as what we do. We're we're a little different. We we got the idea of using spikes. We get air through every every square inch of the veil, pretty much. So this is the. Uh one of the hoods for the dryers. Each dryer has three of these hoods, and each hood will cover two bales. We got one bale here, and one bale there. The air will, will come into here, come down through here, and then out each, each individual spike. The spikes look like this. Each of these, each of these manifolds has 14 spikes, and then we have six rows for each bale. So that's how the air goes through. And each spike, as you see, has slits all down it on four sides. So the air will blow out of those and into the into the bale. So we got to build three of these for each each machine. What we talked about earlier, the hoods. So this is where the hoods will come into action. They they sit up on top of here, and so this is this. This is just a box, basically, where the bale's gonna go in. So the hoods sit up there, they go up and down. The bale loads here, so you put one bale in, and then you get another bale, and, you, and it'll push the second bale to the far side over there. Then you back it up, and it stops here on this, on this ledge here. So then the two bales in there, the hood will come down with the spikes in it, and then it'll start drying. So the dry time is anywhere from 12 to 20 minutes depending on some of the factors with the bales. The, uh, the cylinders that will, will pull the hood down will be attached down in here. So they're actually part of the trailer frame and they'll, they'll go down there. So the pull from the trailer down and then the other end of the cylinder will be on the hoods. And then when they're done, you'll grab another bale and start pushing it. It'll push them all out that way. The two bales that are done, they'll all go that way. And then you load it with, with two new bales. So that's how it works. As we uh, develop this hay dryer, we always come across situations or problems that we have to try to find solutions for. So what we got is we're gonna dry two bales at once in each chamber. So we got one bale will be this section here, the other this section here. This is one of our hoods that's kind of stood up on edge here. So the two bales, one there and one there, and there's gonna be about a six to eight inch space in between the two bales. So what happens is that this is the hot, moist air comes out of the bales, it's gonna be trapped in between them, in between the two bales here. So we don't want that, that moisture sitting in there, so we gotta get rid of it somehow. So we, so we thought, why don't we just use the air that we've already got, and we'll add another manifold here, and we'll put, we'll put five holes in there, which will blow, we'll put, we'll put a couple tubes on there, or a tube in each spot, and it'll blow air, in between those two bales, circulate that moist air out from between the two bales. We had to figure out our fan and uh, figure out fan law, which is horsepower, CFM, and static inches of pressure. We had to figure that all out, what would work for our, for six bales at a time, which would give us 24 bales an hour or 500 bales a day. It took a lot of doing. We have 84 spikes that go into a 3x4 bale, and so every every 6 inches is pretty much covered with all of our spikes in our, in our bales. So. 
Yeah, so we got air flowing through through the whole bale, and we have pretty high pressure. But that was one of the criteria that we set out for ourselves, and to have very high pressure that we can get out of a blower, so that we would ensure equal amount of air to every spike. Two machines in 24 hours, we did 860 bales. They were anxious and they bailed it a day sooner than they should have. As a result, that hay was going to go bad. It didn't show up with the dryers for about four days after they had bailed and stacked it. And the bales were starting to warm up inside. We got there with the dryers, dried it all. Because it was bailed a day early, it was soft and pliable. It was very green and lots of leaf on it. That could have been a disaster for that owner. They could have sold it all for cow feed for $100 a ton. But as a result, because it was so soft and so nice, they actually got $420 a ton for it. And so we believe that all hay should be baled a day sooner than we normally do, where it would keep, you know, at 12 to 13%. If we bail it a day early at 18 to 25%, then we save value. Don't let the sun take that value away from us. Simpson Maxwell, which has a store in Prince George. Our fans now are being built, like I said, just east to west of us in Smithers. Our couplers, most of the time we buy those through KJM, Company of Prince George, a family owned company, just a great company to work with. And right here, Van Hoof, our Guardian Aerospace, does a lot of work for us. Uh, they make all of our spikes for us. It's very slow, tedious work, and it takes precision and accuracy in making those spikes. And they do a wonderful job for us. Our, all of our painting is done by J&T Painting. Uh, Dave, uh, just first class painter, does a great job. And what's nice about that, it's only four miles from our shop. And it's very close to us to put that stuff on a paint trailer, drag it over there, they paint it, and just drag it back home again. So that's very nice. We buy our trailers through Premium Truck in Prince George. That's what and we mount everything on, everything on. Uh, the hoses we get all made through Rich's Saw Sales right here in town. Barrel and Motor, we bought a lot of shop supplies through those guys, a lot of bolts and such. p Supplies, they supply us with quite a bit of stuff too, actually. We're always picking up stuff if we need an extra piece of iron. The first one we built, we took it to Arizona. First place in North America to make a green hill of hay in the spring. So we went down there. So we were invited to take it down to Lethbridge to a uh, place down there. And we took it down, set it up. We dried hay there for about two months with that prototype, three bills at a time. And uh, we got three, four orders Chandler and Blake and uh, Ed Shaw from Carsters, Alberta there and the transportation we're also together for a guy in England. Then we have uh, Spain and uh, Romania, South Africa. Then they toured Italy and looked at some big operations over there. There's a big market over there. there. 